So just to confirm, we took rock salt, a mixture of soluble sodium chloride and insoluble other bits of rock, um, clay, silicon dioxide, etc., etc. Um, added some of that, added some hot water to that um, to dissolve the sodium chloride that was um, inherent and therefore soluble, and separated it first by decanting to remove the big bits that don't dissolve, and secondly by filtration. So inside the flask is the filtrate, perhaps label that on the diagram that you've just drawn, and inside the filter paper, if I just carefully lift this out with my fingers, I know that that's safe to do so um, because it's just salt and water and so on, but inside here we've got what's called the residue, and this is the remainder of the insoluble components of that rock salt just there. So that would then need to just be disposed of, so I should pop that back into that funnel ready for disposal later. I'll just move those out of the way. Um, so the next part of this situation is to try to get rock salt into sodium chloride crystals. And at the moment I've got some sodium chloride in solution here. Uh, we met sodium chloride solution, sodium chloride uh, dissociates into its component ions, sodium ions and chloride ions. They each get surrounded by water molecules inside the solution and it all mixes together. But as a mixture, it's fairly straightforward to separate that. And the process used to separate crystals from a solution containing that solute is called crystallization. Now, what I've got here is an evaporating basin. It looks like this. And I'm just going to pour some of that filtrate containing the sodium chloride into that evaporating basin like so. So I've got some sodium chloride solution inside this evaporating basin. And I very much like to heat this up to evaporate some of the water. But to do it in a controlled way, I'm going to use something called a water bath. Now, I'm just going to stop heating temporarily. Just move that across, put that Bunsen burner on an orange flame, just like so, um, so that I can carefully come across and pop that evaporating basin on top of there uh, without burning myself from the uh, heat of the Bunsen burner. But essentially what happens here is you're taking a water bath. So this is just a beaker with some hot water in it, uh, heating that up, boiling that away. And when that boils, the steam will heat up, will contact with this um, evaporating basin will itself cause the solution inside the evaporating basin to heat up and eventually we should be able to drive off the solution from, from this, uh, sorry, the solvent from this solution. So the first idea is we, we don't wish to evaporate all of the water inside here. What I would very much like to do is create a saturated solution. So if you refer back to the definitions, remind yourself what a saturated solution is. So a saturated solution is a solution in which no more sol solute can dissolve in that mass of solvent at that particular temperature. So by removing some of the solvent, uh, the solution is becoming more and more concentrated until it no longer can dissolve all, all of that solute, and that's the point at which it's a saturated solution. So how to test that, and to test whether this is saturated, what I'm going to use is, is a clean and cold, and that's important, a cold and clean uh, glass rod. Because the temperature of the glass rod is much lower than the temperature of the solution, if this solution is saturated at the high temperature, the solubility will decrease when the cold stirring rod is put in this, and that will cause the crystals to form. It will, it will cause those crystals to fall out of that solution. So I'm using this just really like a cold surface. I'm going to dip it in and give it a little shake and look at the edge of this glass rod and see if any little crystals form. Uh, there are not crystals forming just yet, so I'm going to leave that to heat up for a bit longer, and I shall keep testing this. So I think we'll keep heating this up for a while. I will go dry the stirring rod, and we'll come back when this is somewhere close to being saturated. Um, so this has been heating for quite a while now, probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes perhaps, and I can just start to see some crystals forming around the side of this evaporating basin. We'll just dip this stirring rod in again and have a little close look at that. So it just seems to be starting to form some crystals or some solid sodium chloride on the ends of that cold stirring rod. Remember because this, the solubility is lower because the temperature is lower on the stirring rod than in the bulk of that solution. Um, I can just see it get that on the camera. Um, the very end 
of the stirring rod some crystals being formed just there and so now it's time to stop eating and to allow the solution now to cool and crystallize slowly before the next stage. Next 